In 2022, 84 million Americans had a mental disorder. 34 million struggled with a substance use disorder. And 11 million people dealt with both. But many did not receive treatment. One of the reasons is a persistent stigma leading to silence and shame around mental health problems. That's something former Congressman Patrick J. Kennedy and author Stephen Freed are hoping to lift with their new book, Profiles in Mental Health Courage. Our Michelle Miller has the story. All of this is the Kennedy compound. My grandfather insisted that everybody stay together and that that was the the family ethos. Yeah. There's a point of pride Patrick J. Kennedy takes in showing off his family home in Hyannis, Massachusetts. So many people feel like they know it. Well, they do know it because they've seen iconic photographs, like just here in front of this fireplace. A picture taken the morning after his uncle, John F. Kennedy, won the presidency. President Kennedy always kind of ribbed my dad, as did my Uncle Bobby. His dad was the late Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy. Who got to serve with both of his brothers at the same time, all in public life together. Nearly 70 years ago, his uncle JFK published Profiles in Courage, telling the stories of senators who changed America. At his time, President Kennedy recognized that this country needed to understand about political courage in order to improve our democracy. Today, we need to understand mental health courage in order to advance our mental health system. That's why Kennedy and author Stephen Freed wrote Profiles in Mental Health Courage, a collection of 12 stories about people who have mental illness, addiction, or both. To be able to come out like this and tell your story is unbelievably powerful. We wish we lived in a society where it was less risky to do it because that openness, one, allows people to deal with the illnesses, and two, it makes, it makes sure they get taken care of because a lot of people die or have setbacks because of their inability or their fear of being open. It's obvious how much this means to you. Well, I, I feel terrible that my own mother was suffering from alcoholism. And the way we treated my mother, myself included, was so judgmental and so dismissive of her. I mean, I look back and feel ashamed. And she became her illness in her identity as opposed to Joan Kennedy. And if we have a different system down the line, People like my mother will not have had to suffer both from the illness and the indignity that comes with suffering from the illness. Kennedy and Freed worked together on a common struggle published in 2016, where Kennedy opened up about his bipolar disorder and addiction. I go to 12-step recovery. I have a psychiatrist and talk therapy. I get medication management. Still. Still, I got to protect myself, not just from the disease of addiction, bipolar, depression, all the things that can tripwire the addiction. So you have to deal with all of this. In our system, we only deal with it in segments. And people often, and most of the time, only get one piece of the answer. This is St. Nicholas Park. But this is that Nicholas was the case for Tony Dreyer, who was featured in the book. This was my home. This park bench was my living room. This one here? Yes. When I was homeless, this is where I slept. She says she spent 20 years using and selling crack, getting arrested dozens of times, and losing her children to social services. I remember being hungry. I remember being dirty. Now counseling incarcerated people with mental illness. She is trying to reconnect with her children. I'm not the only one. And I think that if people can hear it from a perspective of someone that's been there, they'll know that they're not alone. When I suffered, I suffered in silence. And so I wanted to make sure that I got out with a loud voice that I'm not the only one and neither are you. I was doing lots of really bad things. The book includes people from all walks of life. You tangle? No, I wanted to learn once.
including actress Gabrielle Anwar, whose emotional difficulties behind the scenes included cutting herself and flying into rages. My symptoms or behaviors were manic, and that can be positive and negative. I mean, I was able to paint the exterior of my house in one afternoon, and I was just super, super functional. And then the flip side of that was incredible rage, incredible darkness, just this abyss of darkness. Anwar wasn't diagnosed with bipolar disorder until her early 40s. Medication mitigates the insanity. But with There's her no husband's support, she sought out psychiatric treatment and therapy. I've been so open with what goes on with me chemically and with my psychology that people now say to me, you know, you seem a little off or, or you seem very tired, you're sleeping too much. And so I have this constant compass surrounding me that is very helpful. And I, I wish that for anyone who's suffering. Part of our goal is to make sure people understand these 12 stories are not so unique. It's only unique that you get to hear them in this kind of depth. And if we want mental illness and addiction to be taken just the same way that all other illnesses are, we have to understand what these things are like and not be shocked, but able to be sympathetic. That sympathy can go a long way, say the authors, in lessening the stigma that leads so many to suffer in silence. No one blames people for a, you know, their cancer uh, returning. They, they wrap their arms around them. They say, what can we do to get you better? And that's not the case in this country with people who are suffering from these illnesses because we still see it as a matter of personal agency. No one gets up in the morning and, and puts their job at risk, puts their family relationships, puts their own life at risk. No one does that. That's not those people. That's their illness. I think these stories go a long way in helping to bring understanding to that. But the issue there's no doubt about it. I yeah. mean, when you hear those personal stories and it, to make us all understand the disease and the chemical nature of all of this and that people just need help in understanding. Yeah, no, and he, he, you know, he himself is, is, a, is a real yeah. testament to, to getting the help and, mm -hmm. and rebuilding his life. I saw him a few weeks ago at the White House with his kids mm -hmm. uh, for Big St. Patrick's Day celebration. He's doing great, but you know, he was in dark place before that. An important conversation.